Yo dogs, welcome to your 19th Bootstrap 3 tutorial where we're going to take a look at mobile navbars. Wow. Alright then guys, so this is where we ended up in the last lesson. We did our navigation and we added this title here and these buttons right here. So it's all looking pretty cool. And by the way, we've done no CSS ourselves so far. Bootstrap's taken care of all that for us just by us adding a few classes. So that's pretty cool. So this looks alright on desktop and kind of iPad sizes, but when we get down to mobile sizes, which is the extra small viewport size, it's going to look like this. Bootstrap is going to stack the links on top of each other and it's going to go full width like that. Now, this looks all right, but if you're viewing a site in a mobile, you really don't want all this space taken up by your navigation at the top. Ideally, what you want is some little bar at the top and a button so that when you click, it opens and closes this navigation, right? And we can do that in Bootstrap pretty easily. And yeah, I am going to throw a few more classes at you, and it is pretty difficult to remember all these, especially when they're quite similar. Look, I had to look up these before I did these tutorials because I don't remember them all. I had to refresh my memory, and um, you know, I know that you guys are going to have to do the same thing too, but all you need to do is make a quick cheat sheet for yourself, or just take a look at the Bootstrap documentation. They're simple. So, what do we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is enclose everything that we want to be in the drop-down menu within a div. Now, the things that we want to be in a drop-down menu are these links right here, yeah, in the UL, and these buttons. So we want all of this enclosed within a div. So let's make that div now. Oops. Hopefully your typing is a bit better than mine. And take the closing tag and put that right at the bottom over here. I'm just going to move these in a little bit like that. Okay, now we need to add these classes to this div. There's two classes we need to add. The first class is just collapse, all right? And uh, the second class is just navbar hyphen collapse. Now, it's just one of those things, you just have to remember them or just look them up when the time comes to making a navbar. That's it, simple as guys. Now there's one more thing we need to do with this and that's to give it an ID. This ID can be whatever you want it to be, but I suggest make it quite semantic. I'm just gonna call it my uh, drop down, something like that, okay? Uh, but you might wanna call it something better. Now, this can be anything you want. It's going to be unique to this kind of menu right here. And we are going to use it. We're going to reference it later um, when we make our button. In fact, we're going to do that right now. So let's make a button. And this button needs to go in the navbar header. And this is the button that the user is going to click to open and close the menu. So let's write that button. And we also need to give this a couple of classes to the first class is just navbar hyphen toggle and the second class is collapsed like that okay we need to do two more things we need to do two more attributes the first one is data hyphen oops toggle like that and we set that equal to collapse and then the second attribute is data hyphen target and this is where we're going to specify which menu we want to control with this button. Now it's this one right here, and remember we gave it an ID, right? So we take that ID and we put it in here. But be careful, because we also have to put the little hash or pound symbol, however you want to call that thing, in front of it right there, okay? Otherwise it won't work. Okay, so now that's done, there's just one more thing to do, and that is to make the icon for the little button. Now, this at the minute would just be an empty button, we've not put anything in it. On mobiles, you typically see three little bars as the button to open and close a menu. And we can add this in really easily using Bootstrap's icon classes. So I'm just going to do a span here and give it a class equal to icon hyphen bar. And that makes one single bar. Now we need three of these. So let's copy and paste this three times, just like that. And I think that should be it, guys. So let's take a look at this now in the browser. This is what it looks like without all that jazz. When I refresh, we get this little burger at the top. These three lines here are the span tags we just added in. We've still got the title there in the header as well. These two are in the header, remember? The navbar header. When we click on this, it zooms down and shows us all of those things right here. Uh, we might want to style this a bit differently in our own CSS. We can override any kind of bootstrap styles um, ourselves but then we click it again to close it. All right, so that looks now a lot better than it was before. It doesn't take up as much room here at the top and uh, just a bit better for mobiles. So there we go, guys. That is how we make, using Bootstrap, a mobile drop-down menu. And I think you'll agree, it's a lot easier than adding in our own JavaScript, 
and uh, things like that. It took me, what, less than five minutes to do that. The only thing I don't like about this is that we have to use a lot of classes and they're not overly semantic all of the time. So it depends what you want to go for. If you want to make something quickly, um, then Bootstrap is really good for that just to get prototypes up and running. Sometimes when I'm making a client website and it's quite high end or something like that, I would typically do a custom drop down menu using my own JavaScript and whatnot, my own elements, just to make it a little bit more semantic and less bloated. But the choice is entirely yours. Any questions, put them down below. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to subscribe, share and like and all that jazz. And I'll see you in the very next tutorial.